Hi five. So today's math task is one of my favourites because it involves chocolate. Now, as my class know, I love chocolate. And so I'm super excited to have a go at doing this maths task with you today. Now, if you've got some chocolate, ask your parents or carers if you are able to use this in your maths task today. If you don't have any chocolate, that's fine. See if you can find something in your house that you can use. Uh, so you might be able to find some blocks, you might be able to use spot tip pens, it could be pebbles, it can be anything at all. You need one for table one, you need two items for table two, and you need three items for table three. Now, I want you to imagine that your teacher has welcomed you into your classroom today and she has got three tables laid out. Okay, and on each table there is some chocolate. Now on table one, there is one bar of chocolate. On table two, there are two bars of chocolate. And on table three, you've guessed it, there's three bars of chocolate. Now she's gonna ask you one at a time where you would like to sit. So which table are you going to go and sit at? Now you might be thinking, hmm, well, I love chocolate and I want you to pretend that everyone loves chocolate. So you're going to sit on table three, right? Because there's more chocolate on table three. But if everybody decided to do that, then you're going to end up having to share three bars of chocolate with everybody and you may end up with a little amount. Whereas if there was somebody on table one sat by themselves, they'd get a whole bar by themselves. So this math challenge today is asking you to think about where each child is going to sit so they get the most amount of chocolate possible. And I'm going to model how I am going to solve this problem. Well, I'm not going to solve it, but I'm going to attempt to have a go at completing the problem. You may get a very different answer. And that is the beauty of these investigations. We can reach different answers by going about it in different ways. So let's get started. So here is my classroom. We have table one which has one bar of chocolate, table two, which has two bars, and table three, which has three bars of chocolate. So although I did buy quite a few bars of these chocolates, I'm going to use strips, which are representing whole bars. Okay, and these are my children. Say hello. Hello. So each time a child enters the room, they are going to choose which table to sit at. So I think child one would probably come into this classroom and think I am going to sit at table three. Okay, but what we're going to explore today is this question. If the chocolate on the table that the children sit at is to be shared out equally at the end, where would they rather be sitting? Okay, so you may set up something similar on your dining room table. You could do this on the worktop in the kitchen. You could even do this on your bedroom floor. And like I said, you don't have to have chocolate for this. You could have something that represents the chocolate as long as you've got one item here, two items here, and three items here. So I am assuming that child number one is going to go to the table with the most chocolate. That's what I would do. Now, let's say child number two comes into the room and is asked where he would like to sit. Now, he may decide to sit at table one, which means he gets a whole bar to himself. He then looks at table two and thinks, I'd get two bars to myself, so this table would give me more chocolate. Table three, I would have to share three bars with this child here. I'd get one and a half bars, so I'm going to have more chocolate if I sit at this table here. Child number three is going to come in. He's going to see that he'd get a whole bar to himself at this table a whole bar to himself at this table because he would have this bar and this child would have this bar. But at this table, he would have one and a half bars to himself because he would share three bars with this child here. So he's going to sit at this table. Child number three comes in. They'd get one bar to themselves here, one bar to themselves here, and one bar for themselves here because there's three bars and three children. So it doesn't really matter where they'd sit. So they're going to choose table one. We've now got four children. We're going to get to about nine or ten. And then I'm going to let you carry on by yourselves. So child number five comes in. 
he works out that he'd get half a bar if he was to share table one's chocolate with his child. He'd get a whole bar to himself if he sat at table two. And he'd get a whole bar to himself if he sat at table three. So he's going to choose table three. Child number six enters the room. They work out they would get half a bar if they sat at table one. They'd get a whole bar if they sat at table two. And if they were to sit at table three, they would have three bars shared between four. That's three divided by four, which is three quarters. So they are going to choose to sit at table two because that gives them a whole bar and that's the most. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number seven comes in. Do you think they're going to want to sit at table one? That's half a bar. Do you think they're going to want to sit at table two? That's three children now and two bars. That's two bars divided by three. That's two thirds. Now that's still more than a half. So at the moment, I think they're going to want to sit at table two. If they sit at table three, that's three bars divided by four. That's three quarters. So the biggest share would still be three quarters. So they may sit here. So we're now up to child number nine. Whoops. Oh dear, he's made quite an entrance. And this is the last one I'm going to do with you. So I want you to carry on with this investigation as far as you can. You can decide how many children are in your class. There may be 30, there may be 20, there may be 22. I'm going to carry on with this behind the camera. But this is how I would like you to carry on with this problem by using your reasoning skills. And this is how I would like you to think about where each child is going to sit from now on. So number nine, child number nine walks into the class. He looks at table one and he thinks there will be two of us all together if I sit here. So there will be one block of chocolate and it will be shared between two of us. So I would get one half. So there's one block of chocolate. It would be shared between both of us. Which means I would get 0 0.5 of my chocolate. If I was to go to this table, there would be two bars and four of us to share it with. Her. So I would also get half a bar. All the paper's moving. So you would get half, which is 50%, if you sat here. And you would also get half a bar if you were to sit at this table, 50%. Now, if I was to sit, or if this child was to sit at table three, there would be three bars shared between five children. And if I was to do my bus stop method and say how many fives go into three, the answer would be none. And I'll move this three to here. How many fives go into 30? So actually, if I was to sit here, I would get 0 0.6 of a bar, which is 60%. So here, I'd get half a bar, which is 50%. Here, I would get half a bar, ooh, which is 50%. So actually, child number nine, even though there are now five children at this table, this child would still get more than if they were to sit at table one with this child here. So at the moment, these children have got 60% of a bar each. These children have got two thirds of a bar each. And this child at the moment is doing really well because they've still got a whole bar to themselves. So carry on with this investigation. I hope you enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to seeing your results. And remember, if you are doing this with real chocolate, don't try and eat it all. Make sure you share it, especially with your teacher.